Hello, gamers. This is Ellen from Tap Tap. By the way, we may look a bit different than before, but we are the same on the inside. Just a little less serious and a little more green. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss anything new from us. Okay, in today's video, I'd like to share some upcoming games on consoles. The games introduced in this video will light up the following months of 2022. I'm also excited about the recent announcement of The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom, and that is coming out in May next year. But for now, let's see what are the most anticipated games that release on console platforms in the coming months of 2022. Number one, The Diofield Chronicle. I'm pre-ordering this one for sure. Not only because of the game itself, but also because of the developer Square Enix, which I'm a big fan of. I loved the game so much just by watching the trailer, and I believe this game will be a big hit after the release. The new addition here is the real-time tactical battle, which is a highly strategy real-time combat system that is similar to an RTS game. The game also reminds me of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Because of its complex character relationships and the overall style, according to the trailer of the Diofield Chronicle, it's still an RPG strategy game that has lots of deep lore and an intrigued story. But the good news is that the gameplay doesn't force you to put too much effort into strategizing your every move, as in Three Houses. For me personally. This type of real-time tactical battle system will be able to bring a much more engaging gameplay experience. Also, about Square Enix, famous for their Final Fantasy series, as already mentioned, I'm a big fan of the JRPG games, and I have to mention that Octopath Traveler is my all-time favorite. The graphics and story are so unique there, and I just can't take my eyes off their beautiful characters. So, I'm pretty sure that they will deliver a new solid RPG experience to us this time. And let's wait and see the reaction of gamers after the 22nd of September this year, which is the day when the Diofield Chronicle goes live. Number two, Bayonetta three. This third addition to the Bayonetta series is now exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. If you are familiar with what happened to the development team Platinum Games, then you will probably already know why Bayonetta 3 became a Nintendo Switch exclusive. According to the first gameplay trailer that was reviewed during Nintendo Direct last year, Bayonetta 3 begins in the Shibuya of Tokyo, where the military arrives to confront a mysterious demonic creature that is attacking the city. And Bayonetta appears in her old-fashioned way to save the day. In the recent trailer, though the action moves to New York City, with more of the gameplay footage, epic boss fights, and some of the story bits were revealed, we can hardly tell the new story direction just by watching these two trailers. But the gameplay still looks pretty cool. One interesting addition here is the new mode known as Naive Angel Mode. Oh wait. What? Isn't the whole point of the game to play as an overly sexualized kick-ass queen? According to the introduction, the somewhat sexual in-game and cinematic content will be hidden in this mode, as well as some of the more visually intense designs of the enemy monsters. We've added the revolutionary naive angel mode to Bayonetta 3, so more people can fully enjoy it. Platinum Games said on Twitter. Um, it's just a cheeky way of saying you can keep Bayonetta's clothes on for a more boring gameplay experience. Well, I will always turn this mode off, obviously. Bayonetta 3 is listed for release on the Nintendo Switch on October 28, hoping that the Switch version will bring a splendid experience to us. Number three, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yes, Pokemon set for the release on November 18. Though I'm not a fan of Pokemon, there's no doubt that Pokemon is the most well-known IP around the world and will always be a piece of breaking news once Nintendo announces a new game. I suppose this is the second Pokemon game this year if we also include Arceus. 
Oscars attracted me at first, actually, but I quit it pretty fast because I couldn't get the point. Sorry, Pikachu. In Scarlet and Violet, the story begins in an open world region called Peldia. Depending on the version, whether it's Scarlet or Violet, the player visits the Naranja or Uber Academies in time for the annual treasure hunt. Where the rival character Nemona encourages the player to explore the open world region and find their own treasure. There's good news that multiplayer mode will be finally available in this game, and which will support a four-player co-op. I think this is a big new addition in the history of the Pokémon series. So, Pokémon lovers, don't hesitate to pre-order the game. Number four, God of War Ragnarok. Well, so here comes the one I really love! The sequel to the long-awaited epic action-adventure game on PlayStation! God of War Ragnarok! According to some recent news, the game will have a whole new set of attacks called Weapon Signature Moves that would take more advantage of the previously underused Triangle Button. When in the original game, the Triangle Button could only recall Kratos' axe or switch back to it if he already had Blades of Chaos equipped. In this sequel, the story is wrapped around Fimble Winter, a prophesied heavy winter event in Midgard that will bring the total annihilation of all of the Nine Realms. Kratos and Atreus must journey to each of the Nine Realms to face some of the old and new enemies and search for the answers to prevent this apocalyptic event. We can also see that the new game is still a story about father and son. But I think Atreus is not just the son of Kratos, and he has his own destiny to change. After all, nothing is written that can't be unwritten, as Kratos said in the first game. But will Kratos finally break free of his past to be the father Atreus needs? I guess we can finally find out about this on November 9th when the game finally releases. Besides the four games I listed in this video, there's still a number of games worth mentioning, such as Scorn, The Crystal Protocol, A Plague Tale, Requiem, The Day Before, and some indie games with great potential, like The Garden Path, Zero Cleanness. By the way, I'm also a big fan of Harry Potter, and I definitely have high expectations for Hogwarts Legacy. Though the release date hasn't been announced yet, I will be patiently waiting until then. Oh, I just watched the newest Nintendo Direct, and I made a decision that I will also make a video about the new upcoming Nintendo games for 2023. So stay tuned! Okie dokie, that is all from me and my colleagues on TapTap. Don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. See you soon!